Well, um, we're looking at two different solar thermal collectors. One is a flat plate collector, and the other is an evacuated tube collector. And um, what I, the reason why I carry both collectors is because they, they, they kind of fit and serve two different needs. The, uh, the evacuated tube collector is what I refer to as my northern climate collector. And my flat, my flat plate collector works really well in warm climate and hot climates. It's not as energy efficient or as, uh, as well insulated as is the solar thermal collector. These, uh, I'm sorry, the evacuated tube collector. These vacuum tubes are very well insulated and when they collect the thermal energy from the sun, they immediately transfer it using a heat transfer fluid right through that uh, copper pipe and transfer that into a storage tank in somebody's utility room. This particular collector um, will absorb that sun's energy, but it will also lose it at the, at, on, on top of the roof during the winter months and not effectively transfer it to the storage tank as this one would. So that one would be better in, in a climate like ours? That would do better. And in fact, the only problem with this on occasion is that it's, it's so well insulated that the snow will, will collect on top of it and prohibit its ability to absorb the sun's radiation. This one, because it is a little bit less efficient and not as well insulated, it will allow the snow to melt off of it because it will absorb that heat and then, and then give it off and melt the snow. This one, you'll actually have to come in with a broom or something like that and actually brush the snow off of the, of the evacuated tubes, which is a positive and, I guess, a negative. So they, even if there's not a lot of clear, bright sky, sun in the sky, they're still going to be able to absorb whatever energy is available coming through that sun and, 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 and work. It's not going to be as efficient, but it, in certain applications, it can still perform and offset a fair amount of your uh, energy demand for hot water heating. Uh, and if you look out in the sky right now, we've got snow on the ground. I think it's only, it, maybe it's in the teens, but there's also a beautiful clear sky. And both these systems, well, our northern climate system really is, will perform optimally in these particular conditions because uh, the sky is clear and it can absorb all the sun's energy. And secondly, it likes cold weather. These things actually perform better in cold temperatures than they do in hot temperatures. They can transfer more, more BTUs starting at a lower ambient temperature than at a high ambient temperature. Okay, then talk to me about cost and installation. Well, uh, the great thing about the cost is that unlike a, a photovoltaic system, which makes um, watts, this makes BTUs and it transfers that sun's energy uh, at about a rate of 95% efficiency compared to a solar thermal or solar PV system that will transfer the sun's energy to electricity at closer to a 17% rate of efficiency. But getting back to that, what I want to say is that um, this. Um, Combine, these costs are really affordable because they're low tech and, and they're not uh, uh, they're not high tech systems. Uh, a typical this one right here can uh, to, to heat all the domestic hot water for a family of four would typically cost about eight thousand dollars. That would be equivalent to about a three point zero kilowatt uh, PV array, which would be more like. Um, uh, $25,000 system, so they're, they're a lot, lot more affordable. And then you have the opportunity to combine that cost with incentives that are being provided through the federal income tax credit at 30%. It's also the Energy Star uh, in the state of Michigan will give this system a $1,200 discount upon purchase or rebate of $1,200. And in, uh, if you're a farmer in a rural community, the USDA is providing 25% grants or 100% loan backing on borrowing the money to install these systems. So, in many occasions, you can save yourself, you know, 30, 40, 50% on the on the startup cost of these things, which gives you a return of them on your investment, you know, to as, as short as five years to get it to pay for itself.
So we're talking heating, for most people, heating hot water, where in, in a house like, like mine, where the house is being heated by hot water through radiant floor heating, right. could that system be tied into that? Yeah, and that system's ideal. Uh, when, when you're using the sun's energy to heat things, it's ideal to do it in floor because there's thermal mass in the floor and that energy that's required to, to heat that home may only need to be at temperatures that are 85, 95, 105 degrees. If you're heating forced air or you're doing baseboard heating, you're going to need to bring a heating element up to 85, or I'm sorry, to 190 to 210 degrees. But with these, with their in-floor systems, such as this radiant uh, complete panel, which actually comes in 4x4, four 4x2 four, four sheets with the PEX tubing, and install retrofit really nicely into people's homes or into uh, new construction just as easily. Uh, these systems don't require those high temperatures and so during the winter when there's not a lot of sun in the sky and there, occasionally it's overcast, these systems can bring water up to 85 or 90 degrees and still take care of all of your energy needs or your heating of the home because it doesn't need to be an extremely high temperature. So, a radiant floor system would be ideal for this kind of setup. Yeah, I really only, pers you know, encourage people to do it using radiant floor heating if they're trying to heat the space in their home. Obviously, domestic hot water really works effectively for that, and um, occasionally I'll, I'll, I'll encourage or let people uh, do it through baseboard heat. And, and if you're doing baseboard heat. It can work, but you're always finding yourself pumping that heat transfer fluid through the, uh, the baseboard, and it does bleed off its thermal energy, but it does it um, in a more continuous uh, time frame versus um, spotty increments like you would typically see with standard baseboard heating. Okay. So just the, the name of this product again is the BTF Solar? Yeah, this, uh, this is our BTF Solar Thermal System. It comes, uh, typically it's five feet by seven feet in height. It gives you a 35 foot uh, uh, footprint. And this is Like our, what we see right here? Yes. Okay, yep. and you said that can be installed somewhere besides the roof as well? Yeah, you can do a ground mount. You can also do a roof mount. Uh, it's it's uh, the, the closer you can be to your utility, the better, and the more accessible you can have access to it during the winter months to, re to remove the snow because it, it's so effective during the winter months. You want to get the snow off of it.